Hello everyone, I am so excited to be here because we're going to make this gorgeous hellebore flower. Now a hellebore, what is that? What a funny name. The hellebore has been around forever, but I first noticed it when I was traveling in Copenhagen in the middle of winter and they would have these big barrels throughout the city full of these gorgeous flowers and I stopped and took a look. Of course I had to pick the little flowers up to look at them because in the winter they do tend to droop down, which is just their name. Nature. Another name for the hellebore is the Christmas rose and this is what they call it in Europe. And it so makes sense because they grow and they bloom in the middle of winter, in the middle of snow. So why not add this beautiful flower to your Christmas decorations this year? We actually have quite a few hellebore on our site, but when I was designing this one, I had the real hellebore right in front of me and I tried to make this one look as close as possible to the real thing. So let's get started. Before we get into tools and materials, let's talk about the Cricut settings to cut your paper. For this flower, I'll be using a double-sided crepe paper, and I have here on my chart that I will use cotton setting with a default or more pressure. I do not recommend using the crepe paper setting for the double-sided because it just doesn't cut all the way through. And for our frosted gold paper pack, I do use a medium cardstock setting with the default pressure rather than the pearl paper setting. Let's start with the tools and materials that we're going to use to make these beautiful hellebore. I'll start with the scissors, and of course I've cut all of this out on my cutting machine, but I do like to have my craft scissors and my detail scissors on hand. I have my needle nose tweezers, my needle nose pliers and wire cutters, very important. I also have a curling tool and then a small blending brush for the color. For materials, I'm going to be using three different types of paper, and we have our double-sided crepe paper to start with, and this is going to be in the Sangria and Aubergine. This comes in a two-pack, so if you buy this, you have some extra beautiful color to make some other projects, like maybe a poinsettia. We also have the green tea and cypress and the ferns and moss. We'll be using the ferns and moss and you'll have the other color for another project as well. Another paper I'm using is this metallic gold pack and I'm picking out one of the colors. I love having this pack on hand for the holidays. There's so many things you can make with it. I have this natural paper spun ball in a 12 millimeter that we'll be using inside of our buds. I'll be using a 24 gauge wire you can also use an 18 gauge wire for your stems, but I like to use the 24 gauge wire for the leaves. So I'm just gonna use the one today and show you how to make it work for both. The glue I'm using is the Art Glitter Glue, which is absolutely my favorite. You can also use any type of white glue, but this one does work the best. So just remember if you're using a different brand, you'll need to hold it longer to let it dry. And for color, I'll be using this Pan Pastel, and this is the bright yellow green. Of course, this is optional. I also have the option of using a colored pencil if you don't have this Pan Pastel. And I'll be using this Posca marker in red wine. Even though you'll be cutting this flower out with your cutting machine, I did create a PDF that you can print, and sometimes this is nice to have on hand, even if you've already pre-cut everything, because then you can see exactly the directions of how to use each piece. So you'll see here that we're cutting out the four centers of the flower with the metallic gold paper, and then the rest is cut out with the double-sided crepe paper. I've already pre-cut all of my gold paper, and you can see it here how beautifully all that detail will cut. One of the things to note is when I'm cutting out this style of the frosted gold paper, I don't use the pearl paper setting. I actually use a medium cardstock on default. I find that it just cuts so much better. The pearl paper does a double cut and then it leaves all these little pieces. A couple tips when cutting out your crepe paper on the cutting machine is to make sure that your grain line is always going up and down and that it matches the grain line on the template. You can see here, I've already cut it out, but the tip is do not rotate any of those pieces. You wanna make sure that they're all the same as the way that we supply them to you. And sometimes when you click make it, it will rotate things, just keep an eye on that. The other tip that I have this is one of my favorite tools when I'm using the crepe paper. You can see there's kind of these creases, is using this brayer tool. This brayer tool will secure it to the mat. It's actually one of my favorite Cricut tools that I use. 
and that will keep it nice and tight until you cut. And I have to say that if you're cutting crepe paper for the first time on the Cricut, this crepe paper is the best to cut. So I have everything cut and ready to make one flower. Note that the template is set up to make one flower of each. And for this arrangement, I'm going to add five flowers. And you can see here, this one has three. So it's up to you. You could make as few or as many as you'd like. And you'll notice there's some extra pieces in the template, and that's this long leaf. What I like to do is cluster these leaves in two or three, and then just have them available to put into the base of my arrangement and that really does help fill it out. Once you've cut all of your frosted gold pieces, I've already taken one of these off the mat to make one so you can see some of my mess here. I'm going to use this pen, and before I even take off the extra paper, this makes it so much easier. Go ahead and add color to all of the stems of your inside pieces. Now I'm leaving just the tip, the gold, and then each little teeny tiny stem will be colored this burgundy. What happens when you do this is it makes these little tiny tips of this pollen, I suppose it could be pollen, it makes them pop. When I was designing this flower, I actually had photographs of the flowers that were growing in my garden this winter. I had taken a, a couple of flowers apart and really dissected them and took really close up pictures of the center so that I could get it as exact as possible. I had so much fun replicating. I'll go ahead and color that whole center piece so it doesn't peek through. You can see I already have this one done. I'm only making one flower today, so I cut this out for three. I'll go ahead and just color in the one. So each center, has four pieces. There's a lot of detail going on here. These pieces that look more like a flower, we'll leave those solid gold. We won't touch those. Something to note, when you buy these Posca pins, you have to get them started by pumping them onto the paper. When they start to feel a little dry, you can shake them and give them a few more pumps. And you can see how the color just comes right out. Okay, I am done with that side. And this is where these needle nose tweezers come in so handy. Another one of my favorite tools. Now I could go ahead and peel off all the rest of the paper, that's fine, but I might wanna go back and cut some more. So I'm gonna leave it on. And the way that I'll get these pieces off, I might try to kind of pull one of the little tendrils up just a bit so that I can slide my tweezers underneath and right into the center. These are so tiny, I really wanna keep them intact. I'll pull up another one just so I have a bit more space because I don't want to rip it off. Okay, I slid my needle point right to the center and then I'm just gonna pull it directly up. And we have a complete piece, no tears. I'll do the same thing for all of those. You know, I can go straight in, but I find that it actually works better to go underneath one of them, one of these little, little arms. This is a brand new mat, you guys, so it is extra sticky. Sometimes it works best to work on a mat that has a little use so it's, it's not quite as sticky. But I wanted a clean mat for the video, so I have to pay for it. Boom, so much fun. Okay, there's the two pieces, here's number three. And you'll notice that my, my marker isn't perfect on these. I might go back and touch it up just a bit. And then here's the fourth one, which doesn't have any marker. Okay, tip, don't use a brand new mat. There we go. Okay, so we have all four. I can set this aside. Then I'm going to take my marker and flip them over. I can go back here and just touch up some of the places I missed. I'll flip them over and do the same to the back side. I just find that it, it's easier to do it on the mat, so that's why I take advantage of it and do at least one side. But it's up to you. You can do both sides just like this if you want to. And I'm going to set this aside and just give it some time to dry. That one's fine as is. A little touch up and flip it over and do the back side. Of course, do this on a surface that's easy to wash and clean. You can also use a piece of paper which makes it even easier, a little scrap, scrap paper. The reason why I do use these Posca markers for this sort of thing rather than, you know, an, an, a water-based marker or a, um, 
alcohol-based marker is the Posca markers are actually paint. So they sit on the surface. The, the paint will sit on the surface. It doesn't soak in. It's not thin and see-through like the other type of markers. So think of Posca markers as more of a paint pen. They're, they're really handy. Look how beautiful that is. Just a little touch up. It's okay if it's not perfect. By the time we are done, it's going to be, look amazing. I'm also finding it easier to paint from the center out towards the end and stopping right when the paper shape changes. And it makes it so easy to hold them with my tweezers. This little extra bit of detail is so worth it. However, if you don't have markers and you don't want to do this step, you can go ahead and make the flower with the centers completely gold and they will look very pretty. Okay, I'm gonna let that all set and dry. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and make the bud and start to put together all the leaves. So I have four pieces for my bud. So I do have some 18 gauge wire here, which is thicker. And if you have the 18 gauge wire on hand, by all means use it. But if you only have one set of wire, I wanted to show you a trick. You can take three pieces of the wire. I'm using my white glue here. So I'll place some glue inside of that hole and then I'll take the three wires and slide them into the hole. And I'll set that aside and let that dry. I will cut this shorter, but for now, let's go ahead and let it dry. And now I'm going to put together my leaves. And for each of these flower stems, I have three of these small leaves and then two of the burgundy leaves. So actually there's a medium and two small and then two burgundy. And I've also added a bud to each of the flowers minus one. You can add a bud on the flower or you can just skip it. I like to have a little bit of variety. So I'll show you the full complete version today. So we'll place all of these leaves so that they're forming a V in the center. You can see how the grain is forming a V and the V is pointing towards me, not away from me. This is important. And you know, each side of the crepe paper is slightly different in color. And if you have a leaf that's one color on one side and another on the other side, that's okay. So I'll go ahead and arrange these all so I'm ready to add some glue. And I'll take my fine point on my glue here. This is another reason why I love this art glitter glue. And just drop a line of glue onto the edge. And then I'll place my wire. And I'm leaving a gap at the top because I just don't need the wire to go all the way to the tip. If you need, you can add some more glue onto the top, onto the top of the wire, and then place that other leaf to sandwich the wire. And this is just such a beautiful way to create leaves that you can shape and form. They have strength with that extra wire. And I like to press them together with my fingers to really seal that wire in. And I don't need the whole wire, so I'll go ahead and cut it off and use the rest for the next leaf. Here's another trick I wanna show you guys. I will take my tip off the wire. I'm going to measure, again, leaving a gap with my fingers and I'll just slide it in and give it a little very, very light squeeze. This glue is actually quite thin, which is another reason why I like it. It's quite thin, but it's very, very efficient. It holds very well. Now I'm just using the, the wire to add a bit of glue to the tip and then pulling it down and then placing the other on top. This is my favorite way to wire leaves, but pick what works best for you. I feel like I, I have less of a mess when I do this. I have another piece of wire I can use for my next leaf and I'll just finish these up. When I'm gluing wire between leaves or petals like this, I do prefer the thinner wire. I do prefer the, eight, uh, the 24 gauge, not the 18 gauge. However, if all you have is 18 gauge, absolutely use it. The reason why I do like the thinner wire is it's, it's easier to get a nice flat finish where the thicker wire will get a bit bulkier. So just kind of work with that. Make sure you get all your edges pressed in tightly if you are using a thicker wire. I also really, really like to use this paper covered wire because it just seems to be so easy to keep in place. When I'm gluing paper to paper, it just works best. There is my last leaf. And I'm just gonna set all of these aside to dry. And we'll go back to the center here of this little bud. And I think what I'll go ahead and do is cut off, I'm going to leave about four inches of the stem. So 
So I'll cut off the rest and I'll use these wires. Now I'm going to take my four pieces and stretch them out to make a, a dome. And I'm stretching them so that the light color is up and that the dark color is towards my thumbs. You can do it the either way, you know, either way you can do the dark out or the light out, but I like to keep it consistent for each flower. So I'll go ahead and make all these domes and we have four pieces. Then I'll take the glue. I'm going to coat the whole little spun ball and then cover that right over the top. Just put the little hat on top and then press it around to make it nice and smooth. The next piece, I'm going to put glue uh, I'd say about a quarter inch or a half inch on the base. I'm going to place that crepe paper right along the wire and then curve my piece in towards the center. So I'm getting a nice little kind of point cap. I'll do the same thing with the other two and overlap them to create somewhat of a spiral. Now, of course, I'm, I'm not going to put the last petal underneath the first. That's just too much work and I don't think it matters. So I'll just do kind of this partial spiral. And this is such an easy way to make these pretty little buds. And I think the buds just add, they add so much detail to this flower arrangement that it's totally worth having. And you know, when you see a hellebore plant, they usually have a lot of buds. And so, cause they, they actually bloom for quite some time. You can see I sort of tucked that one end in a, just a bit so that the last piece, you know, creates this nice little pointed bud. Once I have it, all in place and it's pressed together. What I've done is I've taken my scraps. After I cut the crepe paper, I have all this extra. And of course you can make other flowers, but what I'll do is I'll fold this piece and then take my longer scissors, this is great for those scissors, and cut maybe a quarter inch strip. And you have to make sure these go against the grain. Do not cut it up this direction, it just will not work. Can't, don't cut it with the grain, you have to cut it against the grain. So cut it against the grain, and I'm going to wrap my stem. And since I have the lighter color on the outside, I'll continue by putting the glue on the dark side of the crepe paper. I'm going to press that in nice and tight, and then I like to add the glue onto the wire when I wrap the wire. This sometimes takes a little bit of practice. If the first run looks kind of bumpy, go ahead and, and cover it again with another one. Now notice I'm using double-sided crepe paper to wrap my wires and it works. Just as you're wrapping it, go ahead and stretch it with your other hand or you can stretch it before you wrap it. I'm trying to make it as smooth as possible. You can run it through your fingers, smooth it out a bit, and I'll set that aside. Okay, I think we're ready to start on the main flower. If I were to use the 24 gauge wire for my flower, I would do the same thing where I'd bundle three of them and then just create the flower on top but I wanna show the alternatives. So here's the 18 gauge wire, which works really well. And I'm starting with this piece. So this is the tall, skinny piece. Add some glue just to the base and then wrap that around nice and tight. And I'm rolling it between my fingers to make it nice and sealed. And this art glitter glue does, glue, does dry very fast, which I love. So this will be nice and tight in just a few seconds. All right, then the next one we'll use is this medium that has the little tips. And I'm going to take my curling tool and very gently roll this paper between my thumb and the curling tool to give it a nice cup. You can go around a few times. I'm using my fingers to continue making this into like a little ball, kind of pressing it together. Then I'll take my wire and slide it right through the center hole all the way up to the base. Right before I add it onto my base, I'll drop just a bit of glue to hold it in place. And at this point, I like to have it dry standing up rather than setting it on the table so it doesn't get pushed over. Okay, the next one is this long spidery guy and we'll do the same thing. I'm just going to very gently pull these through. This time I'm not pushing, I'm actually very gently pulling them. So I'm pulling the, scrape, kind of scraping the curling tool over the paper, but very, very gently. I'm just barely resting my thumb onto the paper. Now I'm going to kind of form it with my fingers and I'll do the same thing and just slide that right onto the wire. Adding just a drop of glue on the base of my first circular piece so that this one will easily be held in place. I'm very, very gently curling this one. This doesn't need a whole lot of curl. 
and I'll add that. And there's the center. That's a lot of detail, but it was actually quite easy, especially you know when you cut everything with the cutting machine ahead of time. My flower petals, I have five pieces. And for this, I'm going to very, very gently just stretch out the center. It's a very, very slight cup. You know, each of your flowers will vary. Some might be a bit more closed and some more open, and that's fine. I would just say keep them consistent. The other thing too is the, the petal itself, there's one side that has a bit more of, of a point than the other, and I'm placing the point outward, and then the a bit more rounded is what I'm gluing to the base. So what I found easiest when I'm applying these petals is to create the petal form first before I add it to the center. So I'll take the first one, I'm adding glue just to the right side, I'll overlap. You can see where the grain line is actually coming right together at the centers there. So the grain line helps kind of point things here. And you can see I'm overlapping about one third. You don't need a whole lot of glue. I probably put too much glue on the first petal. Now since I'm doing this, it makes it really easy to do a full rotation and place the last petal over the top of the one, the left, and then under the right. And I can add that last bit of glue and press it together. This is how I would do a plumeria flower as well. So you have that beautiful formation and I'm pressing it together to give a really nice seal and then I can take my curling tool and move some of these tips in different directions. I like to have some coming inward and some coming outward. It's very, very subtle. You don't wanna to add too much because these are, you know, the, the petals are quite, quite flat, but it gives them some nice variety. Then I'll slide that right on to the center, but make sure you have some glue at the base. And there you go. Look how easy that was. Okay, so to finish this flower, I'm going to cut off some of the wire. It's a bit long. I'm going to start with some of the burgundy crepe paper at the base. I'm using the light side to match the light back side. So you can kind of flip it depending on which flower you have. And just to note, when I am making a set of these flowers, I like to have some variety. So some of them will be on the, the darker side facing, some will have the lighter side facing. So I'm just stretching and pinching, adding some glue, and I'll move this down to about, I would say two inches. I'm gonna hold right there and, and let this dry. Something I forgot to do, which I'll do right now, is add some color to these leaves, and that's where we're using the pan pastel. Also, we can use the color pencil, and I'll show you that technique as well. So for these burgundy leaves, what I'm doing is adding some of this green color just to the tips, and then I'm blending it down and letting the burgundy be at the base. And if you notice that some of your tips are a bit crossed over, you can grab your little scissors and just clean those up. We'll be coloring both sides of the leaf. This is best to do, you know, once your leaves are dry, if you have any glue that's come out from between your crepe paper, you don't want to get the pan pastel on that because it will kind of soak in. And I have my three green leaves, and I'll go ahead and add some color to the base so I'm doing the opposite, just a little bit to, you know, add some interest and texture, visual texture. I think what makes paper flowers look real is when they do have that variation of color. So just to show you, if you don't have the pen pastel, but you have some color pencils, this color pencil, it's a Prisma color and it's called Lime Peel. Use the edge, not the point, as best you can. And you can just sort of add some color again at the base and then press it upwards towards the, the tip. And that's how I would use a color pencil. And you can see it's not as easy, you don't get as much color, but it's an option. And if you have that option, definitely use it. I'm going to stack these three leaves. I'm gonna sandwich the larger one in the center and then the two smaller ones on the outside and then stack these two as well. So I've wrapped the stem about an inch and a half. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add my bud. I don't wanna press this against my flower, so I'm, I'll change, change the direction of the wire so that it doesn't overlap, and I'm going to add both of those leaves at the same point. Again, I'm gonna bend the wire so that they don't bump the flower itself. You can actually do these one at a time. You don't have to do all three like I am. Might make it a bit easier, and then I'm going to tightly, tightly wrap those 
I'm going to go about another inch and then add my green leaves and I'll be using the green crepe paper for that. And for this, I'll go ahead and wrap this all the way to the end. So once you get to the end, you can just tear that paper. And for my finishing touch, I want to add a bit of the pan pastel and the transition between the stem and the leaves and also between the burgundy and the green. And now you can just start shaping the leaves, kind of break them out into threes or twos, however many you have, kind of splaying them out. Oop, I see a tip. And when you see the, the hellebores in nature, you'll notice that the heads actually droop down quite a bit. And you know, I'm, I'm going to fudge on that just a bit because I do want to see the faces. I don't want them looking at the ground, but I do want to bend it out at least to look towards me. And this is where you can arrange your leaves to kind of support that and then bring your, your bud in and have that bud dropping down kind of beside the flower itself. Having this wire in here makes it so easy to just really arrange and make it beautiful. This still needs to dry a bit, so it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of soft, but look how beautiful that looks. I have five finished flowers and three sets of this extra green leaf, and I'll show you how I assemble this. I've picked some different vases to look at to see which is the right size, what color do I like, and I really love this gold vase. It's the right height, it's not too tall, it's not too wide. You can see I have a smaller one here with this arrangement of just three. I've gone ahead and put some foam inside the vase. You can just use that floral foam that's softer. You can also, you know, use poly palettes, although they will fall out if you tip them over. This is poly palettes here. And once I have the foam in the vase, I'll go ahead and cover it with this really pretty bright green moss. You can find this at your craft store. I'll start with these leaf clusters just to start, you know, covering up the base and also let them drape over the side. This one can stand up a bit. And my longest hellebore, I'll place it in the middle. I've left quite a bit of wire because I do want it to stand pretty high. And then I'll just start arranging them so that they drape, they have a nice shape. I kind of look which direction these buds fall. If I'm putting something on you know, the left side, I'll have it fall left. If it's on the right side, I'll have it fall right. And there we have our finished arrangement. In true hellebore form, the faces are kind of draping down towards the table, but just enough so that we can still see them. Another option where I made an arrangement with just three, I actually bundled them together, first of all, so that the arrangement was made in my hand, and then it's so easy just to slide them into a vase. Of course, you can use these hellebore for wreaths on top of gifts or almost any type of holiday decoration. So here you have your finished hellebore arrangement, and I think this will make the perfect holiday gift. If you enjoyed making this flower and have caught that flower making bug, we have more over on leahgriffith.com, including master classes, live workshops, and probably I would say a good 300 different flower designs. And we also have all of the tools and supplies to make them in our shop, feltpaperscissors.com. 